We're going to be talking about taking your line of business apps to the next level. And the way we're going to do that is through some AI functionality, uh, adding communication where appropriate and organizational data. So to give you an idea of today, um, today is all about assisting users with AI. And this is going to be part one of we have three more of these uh, coming up. So we're going to talk about creating an Azure OpenAI resource. So if you've never done that before, you'll see the process. You'll see it's actually really simple to do. And then later, as we keep moving in the series, we're going to talk about how you can inter interact with the APIs and actually use this uh, in your app in some creative ways. So this is the second one in the series. As uh, Vesa mentioned, we have a, quite a few of these planned. Uh, the next ones are all going to be about Azure OpenAI. Now, I do want to emphasize we're going to focus on Azure OpenAI, but you can also use OpenAI as well. So just as a heads up, the app I'm going to be showing you, it supports both. I'll let you kind of play with that if you want. Uh, once we get through those, we'll get back into communication. This will be phone calling, SMS, uh, email. And then we're going to talk about bringing organizational data into your apps. But today, we're going to jump right into kind of where we are in the app. So I mentioned organizational data. This is part of what you'll be able to do. We're going to learn how we could use Microsoft Graph Toolkit or just Microsoft Graph if you want, and actually bring in calendar events, emails, files, things like that. Provides a great way to avoid that user context shifting that we all do, where you go down that rabbit hole to find something and then come back out and you never found what you were looking for. Um, we're also going to talk about good and bad use cases. Um, one that's a little more challenging you just saw there was uh, natural language to SQL. We'll also get into communication, as I've mentioned, and that includes phone calling, uh, email, SMS. And the email SMS, we're going to focus on that part today, not the sending of it, but how can we actually generate, as you'll see here momentarily, uh, an email and an SMS message using OpenAI. And that's what we're going to get to right now. So with that, um, you've all probably heard of OpenAI or Azure OpenAI, and let, you know, unless you just got out of your cave like you know yesterday or something, um, they're obviously in the news everywhere because of the popularity of ChatGPT and some of the other models or options out there. Um, as I mentioned, you could use OpenAI with this, and I'm going to briefly just jump to their page. But Azure OpenAI is what I'm going to focus on and how you can actually get a model up and running there and deployed. And then you can do some really cool stuff right in Azure OpenAI Studio. So if you've never seen that before, I'm going to walk you through that. All right. So moving along, let's jump right off to a demo, not the Star Wars. OK. Close. So first off, everything we're talking about in this series, and I'll have a link for you, a short link at the end of this, is going to be in this uh, sample tutorial that you have here. I'll give you that at the end. Um, so just to walk you through, you would clone the repo, of course, to get to the code we're going to be using. But then you get to this step, and that is creating an Azure OpenAI resource and deploying a model. And what this exercise will do is walk you through everything I'm now going to show you in like, you know, 10 minutes. Um, but it's pretty quick to get through, and it has all the steps if you want to do that yourself. Now, I mentioned that you can use OpenAI. So with OpenAI, you can go to platform.openai.com, and then you can click right up here. I'm not going to do it because some personal info will pop down. And you can actually get a key. And that secret key is what you could use to call these models. OK, now we're going to do it in Azure, though. Same models that you could work with. And the way it would work is you would just come up and type OpenAI. You'll see Azure OpenAI. Now, I use it a fair amount, so you'll see it right here. And then once you go to that, you'll go in and create, just like we would normally do in the Azure portal. And once the screen decides to come up, there we go. You pick your uh, resource group, your region, your name, and there's only one pricing tier as of today. I do expect that'll probably change because it usually does, but we're still a little bit early days on this. And then you would just go through the next, next finish process. Now, I already have one created because given that I have about 10 minutes or so, I didn't want to uh, test the uh, demo god fate. And so I have this one right here. I was actually testing a little bit earlier just for generating like starting 
the starting text of blog posts as an example. Um, and so let me show you what's here. So first off, you're going to see an endpoint. Later, as we go through this series, you're going to see where that comes into play, but you do need an endpoint. And then you also need a key. And so if you've used Azure much, you're probably pretty used to this keys and endpoint. And you can get the key right there. Two keys so that you can rotate them if you need to, but you would just copy that. We're not going to go into the code part of it today. We're going to focus on deployment of the model. Uh, but next week, we will go into that as well. So you'll notice if I come down to model deployments. Now, this is relatively new in the last, I don't know, two months or so. You used to actually deploy the model right here, but you'll notice now it says manage deployments and it's going to take you to Azure OpenAI Studio. Now I have that open right here. So if I were to click that, it'll just take me, but I wanted to have both tabs open. And you'll notice that I've already deployed a model, but let me do create new deployment here and show you something. So these are the models that are available to me as of today. Now you'll notice GPT-4 is there. I have not yet got approval for that. And I work, you know, maybe for Microsoft, but uh, there's a reason for that. It's resource. They want to make sure the customers using it get the resources. So I don't have that, but it is something you can apply to get access to if you want uh, GPT-4. Now I'm going to be using for most of my stuff, honestly, these days though, GPT-3.5 Turbo is a cheaper model and it's super fast. Thus the name, I guess, Turbo. But this is what I would pick. And then you'll notice here, I can auto update to default. And what this will do is right now, the default version of this is 0301. That's kind of like a March 01 uh, here. But notice there's an 0613. Well, if you've ever heard of uh, function calling in models and open AI, and if you haven't, don't worry about it, but it's a way that you can actually uh, get JSON data back then you would need to pick the 013, 0613 because it is supported there. But it's not the default. Eventually, it probably will move to the default. But it, it's almost like uh, an LTS versus current. You know, if you use uh, the .NET CLI or if you use Node or one of those, it's kind of a similar model they're going with. So normally, I just go with auto update to default. That's the safe way. And with what I'm going to show you, that's what will work. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment here by that. Then you give it a deployment name. I usually just name it what it is. In this case, it'd be like that, right? Now I already have one, so I won't uh, do that, but that's all it takes, right? You pick your model, go do a little research in the docs on those, and then you're good to go. So let me cancel that because you can see I already have one. And then one thing I, want, I do wanna call your attention to is right down here, you're gonna notice uh, tokens per minute rate limit. There is 120,000 tokens per minute. Now, if you're not familiar with tokens, words get converted into tokens. It's almost like going back in the day when I was a kid, you know, to the, the gaming uh, buildings and you couldn't use maybe quarters in my world. You'd have to convert your quarters or dollar, dollars into uh, something a little more like tokens, right? So I want to call this out because 120,000 sounds like a lot. If you're rolling this out to a lot of customers, it's not a lot. So just be aware of that. That will change over time. But as of today, just want to make you aware of it. Okay, so now that we have a deployed model, now what? Well, you would normally jump to code, right? And we're going to get to that in the next couple of weeks. But I want to show you what you can do right here in Azure OpenAI first and then we'll go ahead and uh, move into the other. So I'm gonna jump over to chat. And you'll notice on the left here, I have use a system message template. I could pick Shakespeare Writing Assistant. I demoed that previously, actually. Uh, everybody's favorite, if you live in the United States, the IRS tax chatbot. Mm, yeah, that one's fun. Marketing writing, Xbox customer agent, you get the idea. So first, let me show you this one. You're an AI assistant that helps people find information. Now, this is what we'd call the system message. You'll see that right up top here. And then you have the user message, if you will. So like uh, summarize the Roman Empire, something like this. 
Okay, so I didn't tell it much here. That was their default. You're an AI system that provides helpful information, but I'm gonna show you in a moment, you can be very specific about what the system should do. Now notice, because I didn't really tell it what to do, it came back and gave me a little summary here of the, the Roman Empire, just as an example. Let me clear that chat. Now let me switch to uh, a real life one for me. We're gonna to go to update the system message to you're an Xbox customer support agent whose primary goal is to help users. So I have two boys. I don't get to game much these days, unfortunately, just in my role, I tend to be pretty busy and uh, I, I respawn a lot. So um, how do I not die so much in my games? I don't know, let's see what it says here. Okay, so she gave us a couple tips, uh, practice. <laughs> <laughs> Tip number one, folks, practice. Yeah, wouldn't have thought of that. Um, or tip number two for me would be learn to be better at this instead of the good old Atari joystick. Yeah, I'm dating myself there. But, uh, you know, use cover, learn the maps, um, all the things my boys are like really, really good at. They don't even let me play anymore, by the way, because it's like, Dad, you, you respawn too much. And I'm like, fine, that, that's fair. So that's an example of one of these models deployed. Now I wanna show you one more thing though that you can do, actually two more things. And that is, that's nice. And, and look at this right here. I could actually deploy what I just selected as an actual app. And they'll even have a way you can secure that app because you don't want anybody getting to the model. It eats up tokens. So you can actually deploy this if you'd like right here, kind of a one-click deployment. There's a little more you'd have to do if you select that. I won't have time to go through it, but that's pretty cool. So like that's all you'd have to do to get an app that's custom up and running and have your own custom chat bot if you want. Now, what we're going to be doing, though, in the app itself is what we'd call GPT completions. And that is the user types, you know, order is delayed two days. And then we've programmed it in the system message to say, hey, return an email message around the rules that the user wants to follow. So orders delayed, give them a 5% discount or something like that. And then it can generate a, a nice email as a starting point. And then, of course, you can even give it examples of kind of what you want the email to be about. Now, notice over here to the right. I have max length tokens, but I have this uh, temperature. This is, one is really, really creative. If you do a completion, odds are you're gonna get different results every single time and they're gonna vary quite a bit. It's how creative do you wanna be? So if I slide this all the way to zero over here, that's like very little creativity, just do the same thing over and over and over. It's almost just like a, a puncher that punches the same you know hole in the paper every single time. So in this case, you know, we could do whatever, it doesn't really matter. They had it, I had it slid up earlier to one. I'll normally go somewhere in here, if it's uh, like an email scenario where I wanna be a little creative. But then notice here, I can come in and they give us a bunch of examples we could actually use, such as generate an email. Now this one is, you wanna write a product launch email for some new AI powered headphones. They're priced at $79 and they're available at Best Buy, Target and Amazon. All right, what should the subject line be and what should the body be? So if I hit generate, what this will do now is send these tokens up to the model. I'm now streaming back tokens, which gets converted to words. And it gave me an example of what I could actually do. And if we let it go here, it'll actually have a little more details and then you know, here's a subject line. You won't believe what we just released. New AI powered headphones. Okay, nothing too phenomenal, but you know, still pretty cool. Now, if I wanted to start using this in a couple different languages, I can hit view code. This is Python. You'll see right up here, this drop down. But notice that they actually give me an example of how to get started using this, which is pretty cool. And this is what we're gonna start going through in the next sessions. Uh, or I can switch, switch over to C Sharp if I want to do that. Now, I'm actually going to show you one that's going to be in TypeScript because it's pretty neutral. But uh, just be aware that that's kind of what the code would look like. And we'll start talking about that as we move along here. Notice there's my endpoint and there's my key that I talked about a little bit earlier. All right, so pretty fun. Now to wrap up, um, I'm not going to go into this in the sessions, but hey, we're here. So let's just go there. 
Um, Dolly, all right, you've all probably heard of Dolly or Midjourney, maybe. Um, they are ways to actually generate images from text. So I could say, you know, create a castle on a hill um, in a beautiful river valley. I don't know. I'm just making this up. Now, I didn't test this exact one, so you, you never know. So if I hide it real quick, you'll know it didn't turn out like I wanted. But normally, it's it's pretty good at it. So, all right, there we go. So it generated a castle on a hill, um, and then you can play with it from there. Now, we're not going to go into that one, but that's another feature that is available with these models. They even give you some examples, like a mountain goat drinking at an alpine lake, digital art. And there's some of the things it would generate. So with that, let me go on back here. All of this, again, is in this tutorial. You'll see a code there you can scan, or I'll give you a link on the next slide here. But if you want to start going through this, we'll walk you through step by step. And uh, next week, we're going to start diving into, OK, that's great. We deployed a model. Now, how do we actually use it in our code? And that's what we're going to look at. So I'll see you next week. Uh, feel free to check out the link here or scan it, and uh, that'll get you the tutorial. So, Vesa, back to you. Mm -hmm.